Hey guys, welcome to Driving TV. Here's the CDL, air brakes, questions and answers for those drivers that are wanting to best prepare themselves for the test. Hope you can find these really helpful. Now let's get started. If the low pressure warning light comes on while you are driving, braking will only occur if there is enough air in the tanks. If the low air pressure warning lights turn on, you should stop and safely park your vehicle as soon as possible. Controlled braking will be possible only as long as enough air remains in the tanks. If the spring brakes are on, you should not use the brake pedal. You should not apply the brake pedal if the spring brakes are activated. The brakes could be damaged if they are subjected to the force of air pressure and the springs at the same time. Braking mechanisms are located a brake drum, inside a brake drum. Drum brakes are attached to the wheels and located on the axle of a vehicle. The braking mechanisms that cause the vehicle to stop can be found inside of a drum brake. If the low pressure warning signal activates while you are driving, you should Exit the road and park as soon as, as safely as possible. If the low pressure warning signal activates while you are driving, it is important that you safely exit the roadway as soon as possible and park your vehicle. If the air pressure gets too low, the brakes will no longer work well enough for you to stop safely. What does the air compressor governor do? Controls when the air compressor pumps air into the air storage tanks. In an air brake system, the air compressor governors controls when the air compressor pumps air into the air storage tanks. In a dual air brake system, each system has separate air tanks, hoses, and lines. A dual air brake system is made up of two separate air brake systems. The systems share a single set of brake controls, but each has its own air tanks, hoses, and lines. Brake fading is caused when brakes overheat. Using the brakes excessively will cause them to overheat, making them less effective. This is referred to as fading. When a brake pedal is pressed and the S cam is churned, the S cam presses the brake shoes against the inside of the brake drum. When a brake pedal is pressed and the S cam is turned, the S cam presses the brake shoes against the inside of the brake drum. This causes friction and will cause the vehicle to slow. What do an anti lock brakes ABS do? Help a driver avoid wheel lockup. The function of an anti-lock braking system, ABS, is to prevent the vehicle's wheels from locking up from hard brake application. Pressing and releasing a brake pedal unnecessarily can release air faster than it can be replaced. In an air brake system, pressing and releasing the brake pedal unnecessarily can release air from the braking system faster than the compressor can replace it. If the spring brakes are activated, you should never push down the brake pedal. Never apply the brake pedal if your spring brakes are activated. Brakes can be damaged if they are subject to both springs and air pressure. Both systems in a dual air brake system share an air compressor. Both systems in a dual air brake system share a single air compressor. If the air compressor is damaged, neither system will be able to operate properly. In cold weather, an alcohol evaporator should be checked and filled every day. An alcohol evaporator can help prevent ice from building up in the air brake system. 
In cold weather, the evaporator should be checked and refilled every single day. If braking at a speed of 50 miles per hour while driving on dry pavement, the brake light can add to your vehicle's total stopping distance. 32 feet. The total stopping distance for vehicles equipped with air brakes is made up of four factors, perception distance, reaction distance, brake lag distance, and braking distance. When braking at a speed of 55 miles per hour while driving on dry pavement, the brake lag can add around 32 feet to a vehicle's total stopping distance. Before starting down a hill, be sure to switch into a low gear. Before starting down a hill, be sure to switch into a low gear. Gravity will increase your vehicle's speed as you travel downhill. If the brake pads rub against the brake drums and create too much heat, the brakes may stop working. Brakes heat up with use. If they are overused and become too hot, expansion and chemical changes will make them less effective and eventually cause them to stop working altogether. This is known as brake fade. When traveling down a steep downgrade, shift into a lower gear, then use brakes to supplement the braking effect of the engine. On a downgrade, the braking effect of an engine should be your primary method of controlling speed. Shift down a lower gear before starting down the hill and save the brakes for additional slowing or stopping that may be required by road or traffic conditions. A one-way check valve. Prevents air from escaping if the air compressor has a leak. A one-way check valve is required to be between an air compressor and the first main reservoir. This valve prevents air from escaping the system if the air compressor develops a leak. When leaving your vehicle unattended, the parking brake should be used. In general, you should always use the parking brake when parking your vehicle. However, you should not apply the parking brake if your brakes are very hot or if your brakes are wet and temperatures are below freezing. Anti-lock braking systems ABS are equipped in addition to other braking systems and do not reduce normal braking power. ABS is equipped in addition to a vehicle's normal braking system, and it neither increases nor decreases the vehicle's braking capability. ABS activates during hard applications of the brake pedal in order to prevent wheels from locking up. To confirm that a trailer has ABS, you can look under the trailer for wheel speed sensors coming from the back of the brakes. If you're unsure if a trailer is equipped with an anti-lock braking system, ABS, Look under the vehicle for the electronic control unit and wheel speed sensor wires coming from the back of the brakes. Before driving a vehicle with air brakes, you should ensure that the spring brakes come on automatically when air pressure falls below 45 psi. Before driving a vehicle with air brakes, you should ensure that the spring brakes come on automatically when air tank pressure falls to a level between 20 and 45 psi. You can do this by choking the wheel and releasing the air from the braking system by stepping on and off the brake pedal. Once the pressure drops to an unsafe level, the parking brake valve should pop out and spring brakes should come on. The air storage tanks hold enough air for brakes to be used several times if the compressor stops working. In an air brake system, the air storage tanks hold enough air for brakes to be used several times if the compressor stops working. Service brakes should be tested before every trip. Before driving, you should always verify that your service brakes are in good working order. Testing the brakes before a trip allows you to locate any problems before you need to brake while on the road. Most heavy duty vehicles use Dual air brake systems. Most heavy duty vehicles use dual air brake systems in which there are two separate brake systems operated by a single set of controls. Each system operates the brake on different axles. Emergency brakes are required on tractors. All trucks, truck tractors, and buses must be equipped with emergency brakes and parking brakes. 
these brakes must be held by mechanical force. A low air pressure warning signal should activate when tank pressure falls below 60 psi. In an air brake system, a low air pressure warning signal must come on if the air pressure in the tanks falls below 60 psi. This warning signal may come in a form of a light, a buzzer, or a wigwag. If using air tanks with manually operated drains, how often should you drain the tanks? Every day. To prevent the buildup of oil and water in a vehicle's air tank, manually operated air tank drains should be used at the end of each day of driving. When only the tractor is equipped with an anti-lock braking system, ABS, there is a decreased risk of jack knifing. If a tractor is equipped with an anti-lock braking system, ABS, but the trailer is not, the risk of jack knifing will be reduced and the driver should be able to maintain steering control. If only the trailer is equipped with ABS, it is less likely that the trailer will swing out to one side. During an applied leakage test, the maximum leakage rate for a double combination vehicle is 4 PSI in a minute. It is important to know the maximum air loss rate that is safe for your specific vehicle. A double combination vehicle should have a leakage rate no higher than 4 PSI in a minute during an applied leakage test. The service brake system applies and releases the brakes when you press the brake pedal while driving normally. Air brakes consist of three separate braking systems, the service brake system, the parking brake system, and the emergency brake system. The service brake system applies and releases the brakes when you use the brake pedal while driving normally. The air pressure in a dual air brake system should build from 85 to 100 PSI within 45 seconds. When inspecting a vehicle with a dual air brake system, you should wait for air pressure to build from 85 to 100 PSI in both the primary and the secondary systems. This should take about 45 seconds. What color is the low air pressure warning light? Red. A low air pressure warning signal is required in vehicles with air brakes. The warning light is usually red and may be accompanied by a buzzer. Air tank drains are used to drain water and compressor oil from the air tank. In an air brake system, the air storage tanks must be drained to remove accumulated water and compressor oil. Failing to do so can cause damage. Manually operated drains should be used at the end of each day of driving. The most common type of foundation brake used is the SCAM drum brake. The most common type of foundation brake is an S-cam drum brake. What is a wigwag? A type of warning system. A wigwag is a type of low air pressure warning device in an air brake system. It drops a mechanical arm into the driver's view when the air pressure in the tank falls below 60 psi. What can happen if the air pressure gets too low in an air brake system? The brakes may not work. Pressing and releasing the brake pedals unnecessarily can let air out faster than the compressor can replace it, reducing the available air pressure. If the air pressure in an air brake system gets too low, the brakes will no longer work. Before driving a vehicle with a dual air brake system, you must wait for the air compressor to build a minimum of, in both the primary and secondary systems, 100 PSI. Before driving a vehicle with a dual air brake system, you should wait for an air compressor to build up at least 100 PSI in both the primary and secondary systems. Which of the following is not a part of an air brake system? An axle brake system. Air brakes consist of three separate braking systems the service brake system, the parking brake system, and the emergency brake system. 
to stop in a vehicle that uses air brakes, the driver should push the brake pedal down. To make a normal stop in a vehicle with an air brakes, push the brake pedal down. The harder the pedal is pressed, the more air pressure is released. A dual air brake system has two separate air brake systems, but uses a single set of controls. A dual air brake system has two separate air brake systems that use a single set of brake controls. One system typically operates the regular brakes on the rear axle or axles. The other system operates the regular brakes on the front axle. Why do you need the drain air tanks regularly? Because compressed air contains some water, which must be drained from the tanks. Compressed air in an air brake system usually contains a certain amount of water and compressor oil. The water and the oil can damage the brakes if left to accumulate in the system. Takes must be drained regularly to remove this buildup. How many air storage tanks are used in an air brake system? The number varies. Air storage tanks are used to hold compressed air. The number and size of air tanks in an air brake system varies among vehicles. An alcohol evaporator in an air brake system prevents ice from forming in the braking system. Some air brake systems include an evaporator that introduces alcohol into the system. The alcohol can prevent ice from forming within the system. A modulating control valve can control the spring brakes. A modulating control valve allows a driver to gradually apply spring brakes in equipped vehicles. The valve is controlled by a lever located on the dashboard. An air compressor governor will stop the compressor from pumping air once the air tanks have an air pressure level of 125 psi. An air compressor governor will stop the compressor from pumping air once the air tanks are at an air pressure level of 125 psi. This air pressure level is referred to as the cutout level. What is removed when an air tank is drained? Water and oil. In an air brake system, the air storage tanks are equipped with drains that allow water and compressor oil to be removed. The water and the oil can damage the brakes if left to accumulate in the system. What color light indicates a vehicle's ABS is not working? Yellow. On vehicles with anti-lock braking systems ABS, yellow malfunction, lamps alert the drivers to ABS malfunction. Foundation brakes are used at each wheel. Foundation brakes are used at each wheel. The most common type is the S-cam drum brake. What can happen if a parking brake is used in a very wet weather when temperatures are below freezing? The brakes may freeze so the vehicle cannot move. If you use the parking brakes when the weather is very wet and the temperature is below freezing, their brakes may become frozen, preventing the vehicle from moving. When using the controlled braking method, in an emergency situation, you should apply the brakes as hard as possible without locking the wheels. The controlled braking method for emergency stops involves applying the brakes as hard as you can without locking the wheels. Keep steering wheel movement small when braking in this way. Front brake limiting valves are intended to prevent the front tires from skidding. Some older vehicles with air brakes have front braking limiting valves. These valves were intended to reduce the risk of front wheel skidding. However, research has shown that such devices are unnecessary, so they should be left in the normal position. 
All air tanks must include a drain valve. Air brake system tanks must contain drain valves. These valves are used to drain accumulated oil and water from the tanks and may be either manually or automatically operated. Friction inside a brake drum can cause when the brake shoes and linings push against the inside of the drum. Friction inside a brake drum is caused when the brake shoes and linings push against the inside of the drum. The friction in the drums will slow and stop the vehicle. During a static leakage test, the maximum leakage rate for a double combination vehicle is 3 PSI in one minute. When performing a static leakage test on a double combination vehicle with air brakes, the leakage rate shouldn't be no more than 3 PSI in one minute. If air leaks from the air brake system at a quicker rate, the vehicle should not be driven because something likely needs to be repaired. If the safety relief valve in an air brake system is releasing air, there is something wrong with the brakes. The safety relief valve in an air brake system releases air if necessary to prevent pressure in the system from becoming too high. If the valve starts releasing air, there is something wrong. Have a mechanic fix this problem. Well guys, hope this was helpful for you. If so, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming videos. Thank you and best of luck to you.